Welcome to the third video lecture for Chapter 15. This one will cover uh, the second and third law of uh, thermodynamics, and we'll look at heat engines. And for a special guest lecturer or presenter, the head of the science department, you may know him, Mr. Ed Weiser. And without further ado, here is Mr. Weiser. Hello. This is awkward. I feel I've never done anything like this before, so here goes, kids. All right, these old notes, 15.6, specific heat capacities in the first law of thermodynamics, um, seems like these two different formulas are very different, but it's the same thing, keeping in mind that ideal gas laws, uh, ideal gases are going to behave very similarly. So you just take, figure out what the gas constant is, and under constant pressure, the gas constant becomes five halves R, and under constant volume situations, it becomes three halves R. So if you have a graph of the phase change of any substance moving up through, if it starts off being um, frozen helium, then becoming liquid helium, then going to gaseous helium, it's going to have a curve that would be exactly the same once it becomes a gas as, say, can you have gaseous lithium? I mean, ideal gases are very, very difficult to actually find, but it would be the same exact values for the for that C right there, the specific heat capacity of gases under those two different conditions. Moving right along to this next section, 15.7. Um, it happens fast because that previous section is pretty quick. It's, you all have the same tools that you need to be able to solve those problems from that section. It's just for gases, and all ideal gases behave the same. So you don't have to figure out the specific heat capacity for different elements, blah, 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 blah. So with the second law of thermodynamics, it, the reason why that bullet there, duh, is because, well, it makes a lot of sense. Heat flows spontaneously from a hot thing to a cold thing and does not go the other way. When you were younger, maybe you thought that, well, in, uh, on a day like today where it was 9 degrees out this morning, 9 degrees Fahrenheit, it might feel as though the cold is coming to you. But that's because the cold air pushed out the hot air. And that happened actually because there must be some work being done by the sun. So here we go. The sun is actually a very good heat engine when it comes to wind. All right. I don't know why this is here where it says these are not all of the laws of thermodynamics. Maybe there's something in the book that says something about that. But yes, there are. there is the third law, and you already know the zero, zeroth law. Do you know the zeroth law? I believe that was at the beginning of the chapter. Fifteen point eight. Heat engines. A heat engine is any device that uses heat to perform work. It has three essential features. Those have probably popped up already. Heat is supplied to the engine from the hot reservoir. Oh, what is what? Part of the input heat is used to perform work by the substance. Okay, and then the remainder of the heat is rejected to the cold reservoir. Okay, well, reservoir is just a place where stuff is stored. Um, and this is very abstract. I think the, there are very good examples of what a heat engine is. The thing that probably comes to your mind is the engine in a, an automobile. So, but where is that hot reservoir? The hot reservoir in an automobile is within the engine, that space of air where the gasoline is injected in and then the spark happens. That becomes the heat reservoir. That's where the, the stuff that is hot, the chemical reaction that increases the kinetic energy of all of those gas molecules, that area right there is the hot reservoir. Then it does work by pushing the piston down or up or sideways, depending on which way the engine is oriented. And then the cold reservoir is just the atmosphere, the whole entire surroundings of the car. I think a very good example of a heat engine that does not usually come to mind is a gun. Do you talk a lot about guns in class, Mr. Wolf? Okay. Well, 
if you've ever played with a bullet, I hope you've done it safely, inside a bullet there is gunpowder and a little bit of flint. And so inside that little container, right behind the bullet, it's called, that container is called the shell, when the gunpowder is ignited, that area becomes the hot reservoir, and that heat does work in pushing the bullet out of the gun. The cold reservoir is the surroundings. And so in both of those cases that I was just talking about, the cold reservoir has a temperature, and that temperature is the temperature of the atmosphere. So here on this slide, we just have subscript H standing for hot, C means cold, and here you go. There are a little bit better definitions for these reservoirs. So QH is the heat that flows out of the hot reservoir or into the hot reservoir of a refrigerator, air conditioner. Things get backwards for those situations. QC is the heat that flows into the cold reservoir. W is the work done by the engine. TH and TC are in Kelvin. Um, pretty much all the way through these chapters. But energy is always conserved. Obviously, that makes sense to you all. But the, the heat that flows out of the hot reservoir does work, and also there is some heat that remains. We'll see what this means for the third law of thermodynamics. Oh, up comes an example. So here we are onto some examples. For efficiency, the, these are the formulas that you will see on the AP formula sheet. All heat engines reject heat into a cold reservoir, and the temperature of the cold reservoir can never be zero Kelvin. I know that it felt like it was cold out there this morning, but it was nowhere near zero Kelvin. Still close to room temperature, but if you think about it, looking over here, where can you see the... The E with the C formula, that's the, the Carnot efficiency of an engine, where you take the temperature of the hot reservoir, you subtract the temperature of the cold reservoir, and then divide it by the temperature of the hot reservoir again. You can see that if TC can't be zero, then you're never going to have a perfectly efficient engine. So today, the, the temperature outside is still going to be close to 300 Kelvin, it's got to be lower, so therefore the efficiency of a, an engine today outside would be actually a little bit better. That should be a, maybe a problem that you've got. How much more efficient is it on a cold day than a hot day? Uh, but it makes a big difference for airplane engines taking off in, um, in hot, hot, hot weather. So here, to give an example, if a car engine has a, the, the hot temperature of around 1,100 Kelvin, you subtract out the cold temperature, the, the temperature of the atmosphere today, that's where the cold reservoir's temperature is, that's 300, and divide that by the hot temperature again, you're going to get a, an efficiency very close to 70%. So, and that's very, very good. And no car engine is actually that efficient due to the fact that there's a lot of friction involved. So that's where you would use the, the formula above, taking the true work output that the car does and dividing it by the heat that uh, flowed out of the hot reservoir. Take the absolute value of that, and um, that's just to basically eliminate confusion over whether the heat was flowing out of the hot reservoir or into the hot reservoir, but definitely positive work is going to be done, and that's that efficiency right there. 15.12, the third law of thermodynamics, it's very straightforward. It's not possible to lower the temperature of any system to absolute zero in a finite number of steps. Thinking about that, if you've got a hot reservoir, uh, just a container with a lot of gas, and those molecules are whipping around, bouncing off of all of the sides of the container, the only way you can cool that off completely is by doing work to stop that one molecule, do, and then stop and the other molecule, and find all of the molecules and stop them. If you stop one and then you try to stop the other one, that first one might get bounced around by somebody else coming in and knocking it around. And so it just the math behind it becomes just boring and nauseating. And not only that, you'll never be able to do it. 
That's the third law of thermodynamics, and you need to accept it. But it's just pretty much an idea. I don't think it's technically on the AP exam, but it's a very important concept that you won't be able to cool something off to zero Kelvin. So thank you very much to Ed Weiser, Mr. Weiser here. He was pretty awesome in uh, going through and doing that and just kind of trying to bring in some other other voices to do this so that way we'll, we'll see some new lectures. Um, here are a couple of review questions, and they're all related together. A particular gun can accelerate a 0 0.005 kilogram or 5 gram bullet to a speed of 400 meters per second. What is the work done by the gun? Think back to energy and how you change the kinetic energy of something. Um, next, a thousand joules of chemical potential energy was converted to heat before the bullet moved. This is like the firing, expansion of the gas and the burning, the combustion inside there. Um, think of uh, this as being the heat going to the hot reservoir. How efficient is the gun? And using that efficiency, what is the temperature of the hot reservoir in a gun when the outside temperature is 300 Kelvin? Assume for this case that it's an ideal gas or it has a Carnot efficiency. All right. Thank you very much and have a great night and we'll see you tomorrow or the next day in class.